Welcome again, Baha, to another event, MWCQP. And it's, it's a wonderful seeing you again, Baha. You are our walking, talking encyclopedia on all things Palestine. And um, today we're going to be focusing on the sacred olive tree, the blessed olive tree. Just from that video alone, there's so much to unpack. Maybe we can begin by just telling our audience where you are right now and where is that olive grove located? Unfortunately, I am at home. I was hoping to be with uh, you from uh, a field today, but yeah, uh, logistically it didn't uh, work. Like the people who were coming to help out from Nazareth, like I also want to comment on like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not an encyclopedia. I uh, just happen to know a lot about Israeli apartheid and I have passion to like uh, olive trees like i've been working around olive trees since 2006 right and so like we're talking about two of my passion like yes. you know educate people about the different forms of israeli apartheid and educate people about the importance of olive trees you mentioned that the removal of the olive tree is in essence the removal of the people which is really the goal israel has right, right? because you remove the tree you are removing a living breathing testimony of the existence of palestinians so maybe on that note note you can share your thoughts and your slides well on the destruction of olive trees it's not a hidden fact actually like it was decided to turn palestine into a jewish homeland by europeans or european settlers let's say they came in with this racist motto that palestine is a land without people this is not a fact because palestine around that time in the beginning of the 20th century had more than a million people living here but because like the majority of the population here does not identify with the ideology of those settlers which is jewish nationalism which we, you know as with the term Zionism. We simply did not exist because we do not share that ideology and uh, we don't un- identify with it. Although it's good to say that 3% of the Palestinian population in the, in the beginning of the 20th century identified with Jewish faith, but 97% didn't. So 97% of the population did not exist. So the founders of the State of Israel drafted a plan called Plan Dalit that aims at the removal and the ethnic cleansing of the majority of the Palestinian population. Further remove Palestinians from about 500 than 30 communities. And then they destroyed the majority of their homes. So if they would come back, they wouldn't come back to, to, uh, to rubble rather than to their homes. And then you continue the process of removing the people and removing the evidence. You remove the house and then you remove the trees. The olive trees are, as I said, like that, another evidence that Palestine has never been a land without people, that Palestine have always had human presence and the uh, Palestinians in it. So if you want to give credibility to a racist motto like Palestine is a land without people, you need to remove the evidence of the existence of the people. It's best said by an Israeli military commander, I think in 2006 or 2007. He said it this way, like their children, their trees look so naive as if they can't harm anybody. But like their children, the trees become a ticking bomb. So this military commander uh, justified not only the racist view of Palestinian children, that Palestinian children represent future threat, but also justified the destruction of olive trees because olive trees represent a future threat. And the only future threat that olive trees represent is the exposure of the lie and racism behind the claim that Palestine is a land without people. Once again, you can't tell people around the world that Palestine is a land without people and then they would believe you. But then when you tell people that Palestine is a land without people in the shade of an olive tree or one of the seven million olive trees, you will look like an idiot or a racist. So the intention of the removal of olive trees is simply because the olive trees are another evidence of Palestinian presence. And that presence is what the State of Israel have been after. The removal of that presence is one of the things that the State of Israel have been after. And once again, they succeeded in removing about 66% of us from our homeland. And thank you for that. It certainly made or, you know, shows the lie that it is. is it that statement, a land without people for a people without land.